Hello everybody, it's Chris. My hair looks wonderful. I'm exhausted. Got about four and a half hours of sleep last night. I was dreaming about the issues with this thing. Where I have this weird issue where if I boot Workbench 3.1, it just gets to a Workbench screen or just constantly gurus. I have to write a quick pack disc, which I found on the interwebs at hd-zone.com. Thank you guys for that. All my discs are total trash. They got handwriting all over them and all sorts of stuff. But for the past 35 years, I have had this unopened pack of Computer City double-sided, double-density 3.5 disc. And they tell me I get a free replacement, guaranteed. Hmm, cool. Should your Computer City brand disc yet become worn, damaged, or fail on any reason, simply return to Computer City for a free replacement. Forever. Wow. Make sure you save all your data, because they don't guarantee that. Uh, the problem is, I don't know where Computer City is anymore. And these have been in my possession since I bought them in the 90s. And I'd hate to open them. Heck with it, man. You could have sold them on eBay. Yeah, but I gotta use them, too. So 30-something years. They stink. I'm going to use one on my 3000, brand new, 30 something years old, to write the Quick Pack disc. That's disc written on the Amiga 3000. It's booting the Quick Pack installation disc, the one that came from the factory with it. A workbench screen with nothing. This sucks. You must boot from this disc after workbench is loaded. Oh, God. I'm going to say break. All right. Now, since it booted the disk, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put sysinfo in there. Let's see if I can run sysinfo by cheating. Yeah. But it says 60 to 40. It's a 060 Rev 1. Uh, I'm using the keyboard mouse. This is going to be poop, because it doesn't have the library. Speed. Eh, it's okay. 20... Uh, yeah, 27 MIPS, 26.24. No FPU in this sucker either. I cheated to get the... Uh, Unidentified 22, product manufacturer 9999. I gotta figure out what's with this disc. Uh. Mm. Watch, it doesn't have any utilities on it. Install 060, service pack 2, installer, install 040, A4KT, load workbench, and crash. Can't open workbench. CPU. 060. Okay, 16 or 60 cache controller on on storage buffer branch cache off. So it sees it. This is a pain in the butt, isn't it? What fun. My chair just squeaks because I'm fat, by the way. Alright. Apparently, the. doesn't have the workbench library. Install 314 does. Let's see what. Let's see what happens. We've secretly replaced the Workbench 3.1 4000T disc with 314. Now the SCSI 2 dot device is inside the, kick, the Kickstart ROM and they removed the Workbench library, but that's on the disc of install 314, which is cool. Bada bang, Workbench library. I'm such a moron. The problem is, is I have every Amiga model now and they're all a little bit different. Now remember, I have a 3.1 ROM, not a 3.14 ROM. Boom, baby! So I need to find the original 3.1 4KT install disk and workbench disk so I can get the correct libraries for it. I forgot to hit record. So I spent the better part of two hours building an image on Linux Ubuntu Win UAE 4000T blah 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 made a hard file for the Zulu, right? 
and that way it makes it easier. Zulu is a hell of a lot easier than SCSI to SD. Check out my previous video on that if you haven't. I'm losing hair like mad. Built the image, 314. It's like, hey, I need the 4000T modules disc because I didn't do the ROM. I did a 3.1 ROM. And that's when you need a modules disc to supplement the stuff. Now the 4000T, as I've learned, doesn't have a workbench library in its ROM because it has a SCSI 2 dot device because of the SCSI stuff and the IDE and it needs kind of two. So SCSI is the IDE and SCSI 2 is the SCSI. It's weird. Anyway, there wasn't enough room for workbench library. That's why no discs would boot learning something, you know, learn something every day. Never had one of these bad boys before, so you gotta experiment. So I did some old crap where I copied some libraries to Workbench 2 discs, opened up the pack of, I shouldn't have opened them, but they're mine, 50 pack of discs so I could write some, did a custom install too, I was going to do old school, then I'm like, you know what, I'm on 314 because it works the best, I'm going to write myself some ROMs, I got all the junk for it, and I'm like, wait a minute, I have D, modules disc, not T. So I have to get the T, and I'm not doing 3.2. I can, I can write 3.2s, but I'll have to look and see what ROM files I have when I bought it. I bought 5, 12, 2, 3, 4. So I own 6 or 7 copies of it, just to support it. And uh, I wanted ROMs originally, so that's why I was doing it before I was writing my own. And I don't have the 4000 T. I went to buy them, you can't buy it. So I have to find a store that still sells 314. 4000 T ROMs so I can get another disc set for the 4000 T even though I believe that the modules disc is just renamed D or T so I'm I renamed the modules D to modules T to get the install and it booted so right now what I've done is the Zulu SCSI is the shizzle and I have no mouse so this takes a little bit longer and I put the quick pack um, disc on right and now I'm going to remove the quick pack disc and we're going to reboot with the Zulu and the hard drive light should be a blinking in a second there it goes and we're up so now I'm going to run we're going to get a new shell we're going to run CPU <sighs> finally all right so now we have 68 or 60 68 a2 now, I had to do some crazy crap to get the super scalar whatever mofo working. Now, after all of that, all I wanted to do, well, I gotta figure out what disk is what now, is run sysinfo. This is all without a mouse, by the way. How do you use it? Let me without a mouse. Alt, hold the Alt key down, use your arrow keys here, direction. Left click, right click, hit the shift key. Hold the shift key while you're moving your alt and it makes the makes it move faster. Be right back. Finally, after all night, all day, and finally just saying Zulu that bad boy and win UAE. Let's see what we get. 68060. 68060 plus 882 and an MAU. So now after all of that, let's see what we get. Whoop! Where's my phone? There we go. We got our assist info. We have 37,666. Dry stones, 39.31 million instructions per second and 28.04 million floating point operations per second. We are at phone me now because I don't know and this is a 68-60 Rev 1 3.6. Make sure it's not cached. That is the hard drive light rolling. Uh, we're gonna run AIBB. That way I can at least do 040 math, okay? 68020 SC math first. Beach ball. Go. So this is standard processor 68060. This is a 50, what did I say it was? 50 megahertz? With an FPU, with an MMU. Rev 1. Yeah, 50 megahertz FPU and 50 megahertz MMU. So we smoked it. 10, 6, 2 seconds. But that was that was uh, standard processor math. Let's flip this to coprocessor and then we'll flip it to 040 math. So here we go. Beach ball. Woo! 1.23 seconds. Let's flip that most to 40 math. Let's see if we get better. 0.96. If we had a 060 math, it would be a little bit faster. 
So she's rolling. It'll take a sec. Numbers, 67.39 coop rate. I don't know. That's cool. Let's flip that up to 040 math and see what we get. Flups, 67.39. So a little bit less, actually. No graphics cards, no nothing, because I don't have an I.O. port, and I can't do anything besides... Uh, yeah, 2.8 to makes a chip. So I got some RAM used up, mainly because of this stupid backdrop. My goal is to take the warp engine, put it in my 4000 desktop. Take my 4000 desktop's 040, I was going to put it in the 3000 tower, but I'm going to put that in the bench unit here, the, the Black Plague from the powder coated thing to get that motherboard at least sorted. At least I can start working on that to get that board repaired and fire it up. That way I have a test unit and uh, I can you know, test cards, test CPUs, test this, test that without taking my units apart and that's what the goal is. So that's what I'm working towards and maybe I won't have to slap beat up mine so much. PayPal credits mad at me. Let me see if I can get this into a higher resolution because we're, we're sort of working. Mega 4000D is now functional even though it wouldn't boot off of any disk because it needs a workbench library. I'm going to burn myself my Kickstart 314 ROMs, even though I got the modules disk. It's got the workbench library built into that modules disk so you can have bootable disks with the graphic. And uh, I'm going to get it sorted, cleaned up, get the cover back on, put the Zulu in a mount. I got a 3D printer mount for the Zulu. And get the IDE hard drive hooked up. And do all that over again. So maybe I'll do 3.9. But for now, that is an initial Amiga 4000 tower video. And maybe I'll put the face on here. I'm going to run to Lowe's and see about getting... Um, I'm not going to click this on all the way yet. Because uh, I'm still waiting for... I still have some stuff to do. But that's how it will look when it's all said and done. It will have a look like this and it'll be smoked plastic in there. You can Google pictures of the 4000T. And this is a Amiga Technologies A4000T Quick Pack 060. 97. Pretty incredible indeed. And uh, I'm beyond pleased with the results. And uh, the special person who helped me acquire this. They know who they are and I want to thank them beyond words because it's been a lifelong dream to own every single piece of Commodore Amiga stuff. So, I want to thank everyone for watching these videos because it helps me pay my PayPal credit bill, which is a lot. And uh, I'm going to keep on going. We're going to jump back into the repair series here. We have many repairs coming up, as usual. But, you know, that's what I like doing. I like helping out the community when I can can't fix them all but we sure do try I've only lost one battle two battles and they were not complete systems they were just amber chips and I kind of forgot to put a capacitor on somebody's uh, board and shipped it all the way up to another country whoops so I had to start double triple checking myself but repair wise the board was still functional so that's cool Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and hanging out for a while. We're going to continue this series as it adapts more and I can acquire some more things for this. So until next time, thank you guys for watching. As always, hope you learned something.